Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at another video about post processing and be able to change this at runtime. But this is specifically going to be about the auto exposure type of post processing effect. So we're going to be looking at taking the parameters, scripting those with UIs to be able to control sliders, drop downs, min maximums, floats, integers, and so much more in there. And I am going to be releasing and have released several videos of this series, and you can check them down in the description. And you can also check out the overview to give a brief idea of how to control them all. So be sure to check out this asset that's in the background with all of the settings for different processing effects on my Patreon, along with 135 different scripts and assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Be sure to check out all the sale links in the description for all the savings on Humble Bundle, the Unity Asset Store, and so much more. Also make sure to leave a like on this video and be subscribed for all my upcoming content. So just to start, if you want to import the post processing effects, I do show that in the generic or the general video in the description, just so that I don't recover it in all these videos in the series. You can just refer to that video and it'll show you it towards the beginning. I've got all the timestamps in there. Auto exposure has different parameters, whether that's the min max, the exposure, the type, and being able to speed up. So it's got one drop down, which has got fixed and progressive. They change the actual parameters that are visible, but we'll go into all of these today to show you how to be able to turn it on and off, control it, and do everything from there. Then remember, if we want to access the post processing, we need to use the namespace. So using unity engine dot rendering dot post processing. Then we're gonna also use unity engine dot UI because we're gonna to need to use and access some UI components that we might want to use. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, or if not, to access the post processing volume, we need to have private post process volume, have that as a name. So I'm just going to call this underscore post process volume, then have a private for whatever effect that we want to reference. So in this case, we want to select the auto exposure and I'm just going to have this as unders underscore auto exposure. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bunch of just text elements, which are serialized field, private text, and then the different text, because as you can see, in my unity scene, I've got just numbers, which will go as we slide actual bars up, they'll just change to make a visual representation. So then we can create a start method and we just reference the post processing volume, set that equal to, we want to get the component. If this script is going to go on our post processing volume, which has a component on it, we can just say, get component post process volume and then close that up because we want to find that script. And then we can say underscore post process volume dot profile dot try get settings in brackets out and then the variable that we created for auto exposure. Now that will automatically get all the settings that we need to use within this script. So remember what we're going to do is we're going to look at turning it on and off, setting the filter, the min max exposure compensation adaption and then speed up and down. First of all, we need to look at how to turn the post processing effect on and off. So we'll say public void because we want to do this on a button. We'll just say auto exposure on off. I'll have this as a Boolean on. And then we'll say that if on is true at any point, then we can say that our auto exposure dot active is equal to true. And then else, so in any other case, if it's off, we'll say that our auto exposure dot active is equal to false. As simple as that. Now, if we want to use the filter, the filter is actually a vector two, so it's between two specific values. So if we say public void auto exposure filter, and then I'm not gonna have anything in the parameters because it's not necessarily something that you can quite as easily do on a slider change. You could set something that sets a variable, but we want two specific values. So this is just an example, so we could have a float and we just call this value x and then float value y because it's just two values that we need. Then we can say that underscore auto exposure dot filtering dot value is equal to new vector two and then in brackets we'll just say value x and value y and then what we can do is say these were actually variables at the top we could just set them equal to whatever value we may want them to be. So I'll just name those as five. So now if we wanted to do the min and maximum, they're going to be exactly the same. So we'll have another public void. Then I'm just going to have exposure minimum, have that as a flow for the slider value. And then in here we'll have underscore auto exposure dot min luminance dot value is equal to the slider value. And then if we wanted to update that text, minimum exposure value text dot text is equal to our slider value 
dot two string and then in quotes we'll have a zero so it's a whole number and this one is between a value of minus nine and nine and the default is usually set to zero. So you always want to default all the things that you do when you do them in the UIs. For the maximum, we can just do pretty much the same thing and rename my method to exposure maximum. And then instead of it being min luminance, we're going to call it max luminance, set it to the same thing. And we can do the different name of the text. So we've done those two. With the compensation, it's still a number. So we can still set this on a slider or a variable, however you want to have this as set. In this case, we can have this just called X compensation and still have it on a slider value, have it underscore auto exposure. And this one, for whatever reason, is classed as key value dot value value is equal to the slider value. And so then I could have this one as my exposure comp value. Now, if you ever need to actually find any of the names that are used in a particular uh, post-processing effect, where you can see key value here or max luminance, if we hold control in Visual Studio and left click, you can see that all the things that are in the class for the auto exposure. So filtering, min, max luminance, key value, eye adaption, speed up and down. Now, if we want to change the adaption, I'm going to set this on a drop down. So it's going to be something that I'm going to use a switch case statement. So if I do public void set adaption type, gonna have this as integer index. And then below here, we're going to have switch index. We're going to switch between how many cases we have. So we'll have two, so we'll have case zero colon. And then we'll have, again have auto exposure dot i adaption dot value is equal to i adaption dot progressive, then a semicolon break. We can have another case, case one underscore auto exposure dot i adaption dot value is equal to i adaption dot fixed and then another break so we get it split up and then we need speed up and down which can be done in exactly the same way as our other sliders dot speed up and then auto exposure dot speed down dot value and then we can update the text if we're choosing to use those so then if we go back into unity itself we can find the object which has our post process volume and then you can see that we have got the script on the object. If we go to my UI elements, which we need to attach things to the button. So if I want the on and off toggle, which I've got on the UI, I'm just going to add the post process volume and I'm just going to go to the auto exposure tutorial, set that to on off. The minimax slider needs to be a minus nine to positive nine on the maximum and minimum and it's set as zero. You can look at any of the post processing effects, look at the objects and if you need to, you can reset them if they're not at their default values and you can just look at what's default. So default is zero, zero, one, progressive to one. So you can set all your sliders and things according to those. And then in the same way, you can just add the post process volume, go to your script, which is the auto exposure tutorial, and then add the minimum exposure and do the same for all of your sliders that you've got apart from the I adaption specific type, which again, you would add your post process volume and then you would go to the tutorial and then you would add the set adaption type and then you would need to name both of the options that you've got for your options. You may need to add plus to add more. So progressive and fix or press the minus to remove one as long as you've they selected it like so. And then choosing the value, you can set it between not one, two, three, whatever it may be. If you set one, you can see that it will be set to fixed in my drop down. If it's zero, it's progressive, which is the default value. So then you can press play, switch this on, set the minimum exposure, the maximum compensation, whether the speed up or the down, set it to fixed, whatever it needs to be. And you can still control all the settings and update the UIs according to those. So remember, you can get this entire project, which includes all of the settings. And you can check out all the other tutorials in the description, along with the, just the general overview that you can check if you feel like you've missed anything. Be sure to comment down if there's anything you don't understand or anything that you want to suggest to improve, I'm always happy to hear. So be sure to check it out on my Patreon along with over 135 different scripts, projects and assets you cannot find anywhere else. Come and join me on Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Asset Store and on my website for bonus discounts along with, along with even bigger discounts for being a patron and being a subscriber to my channel. So thank you to all my patrons and a big thank you to Peter Steiner for supporting the channel and everybody else who comes to watch. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.